Hey everyone, Pixels have traditionally been all about Google showcasing its latest software ideas with the hardware to match. This year is no different, but is Google still pushing the envelope enough or has the competition caught up? I'm Angie for GSM Arena, and this is our review of the Pixel 4. The Pixel 4 has looks that remind me of a candy bar, however, when you actually pick up the phone, it feels much more premium than Pixel devices in the past. It has a decent heft, and the texture of the matte back is incredibly satisfying. It doesn't pick up fingerprints, and the color stays a fun burn-your-eyes salmon orange. It sports Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back, which should have really been Gorilla Glass 6. Google removed the fingerprint reader on the back, so the design is cleaner, but instead of adding an under-display reader on the front, they've replaced it with a face and lock Apple style. It works quickly and reliably, but until Google patches this, it also unlocks with your eyes closed, which makes its security incredibly questionable. At least the phone is pleasantly small, at least for today's standards, so one-handed use is really easy. Sadly, the bezels on the front are quite large for a phone so small, and it seems like quite a bit of wasted space. There's no notch to annoy you, but honestly, maybe they should have gone with one because the display feels a bit cramped for my taste. I also can't figure out why the phone is so heavy, considering it has a battery that's smaller than 3000 mAh. Unfortunately, this also means that battery life was quite poor and it got 62 hours on our endurance tests. It's not like it has insane fast charging to make up for it either, and you get 49% in half an hour. Last year, the Pixel 3 wasn't amazing in terms of battery life either, so it's a bit annoying that Google didn't listen to user feedback and actually reduced the size of the batteries. Despite the relatively small size at 5.7 inches, the Pixel 4 has a really good screen. It's a P OLED display with a Full HD resolution and a 444 PPI, which is surprisingly less than the Pixel 4 XL's 537 PPI. In real life, you're unlikely to notice much of a difference, but perhaps a difference in pixel density rescues a few minutes of battery life in the long run. Maximum brightness on the regular Pixel 4 is also slightly less than the 4 XL, although once again, not by a lot. It's missing the adaptive brightness boost that you'll find on other phones like the Galaxy S10, but it still has pretty good sunlight legibility. Color-wise, the display is great and we found it to be very color-accurate in natural mode, although you'll probably leave it in the adaptive mode, which adapts the colors to the light in your environment. Really, the most interesting thing about the display is the 90Hz refresh rate. It makes the experience feel much smoother, although the software is downgrading the refresh rate to 60Hz to save in battery life. It's annoying that it switches with the brightness. When you walk inside a dark place, the experience instantly becomes less smooth. You can set it to be at 90Hz permanently in developer options, but the phone might die too fast like that for it to be worth it. Really, Google, give us larger batteries next time. So while the screen side of media consumption is great, how's the audio? Well, speaker-wise, the phone had excellent loudness and nicely balanced tunes. The stereo speaker setup wasn't quite as loud as that on the 4XL, but it held its own against much of the competition. There's no audio jack and no adapter in the box, so we used the adapter that Google is selling to test out the wired sound, and honestly, we weren't impressed. On a 2019 flagship, wired audio quality should be much better than this. The Pixel 4 supports aptX HD, so if you're getting this phone, I'd just get a nice pair of Bluetooth cans and forego the wires. Pixels are all about Google showcasing the cleanest version of Android with their newest features. Some features are more standard, like a system-wide dark mode and navigation gestures. Others are more experimental, like motion sense. You can swipe above the phone to change a song or turn on the display to check the time. While it works more reliably than the equivalent feature on the LG G8, it seems to have been a lot of R&D investment that would have been better spent elsewhere. Whether you tap on the phone or swipe above it, that's the same amount of effort. What would have been cool is using gestures from further away and swiping through the phone from, like, a foot away. Still, it can be fun, and my favorite use of motion sense is petting Pikachu or Eevee on the home screen. But that's not something I would pay extra for. More useful is the new voice recorder app, which can transcribe notes in real time. It's about as accurate as a transcriber you can use on any Google service, but it's more convenient and it doesn't require an internet connection. Still, the biggest benefit of Pixels is that they get regular updates for years down the line. This means that they'll continue to get interesting features and performance tweaks. As far as performance right now goes, the Pixel 4 does alright, but is bested by most other flagship phones in both peak and sustained performance. While daily use should be great, you might want to look at another phone if you're a heavy gamer. Google's computational photography has been highly praised for the past couple of years, and Pixels have been known as the phones with some of the best cameras around. That said, this year they have two cameras instead of three. The ultrawide camera that's becoming standard throughout the entire industry this year is missing, 
And considering even mid-rangers have ultra-wide snappers, it feels like a missed opportunity. The phone's dual camera setup includes one 12 megapixel main shooter and a 60 megapixel telephoto. In good light, photos are excellent. They have wide dynamic range, especially when it comes to highlights and color rendition is spot on. Thanks to dual exposure controls, you can also adjust the shadows and highlights as you are composing your shots, although the phone still doesn't allow full manual controls. The telephoto camera takes two times shots and they also come out with a slightly warmer color reproduction. The dynamic range here is also nice and wide. In low light, photos are great even without night sight. They are a little noisier than photos from something like a Samsung Galaxy phone, but it's not excessive. When it's really, really dark, night sight makes a huge difference, and the mode helps retain a lot of color. Low light photos with the telephoto camera are okay, and here photos were often much better if you use night sight. Portraits are fantastic. Edge separation is excellent, and the blur has a natural progression to it, just like from a real DSLR. For some reason, there is no recording 4K video at 60fps. Although most people shoot at 30fps anyway, it feels like another standard feature that should have been included this time around. Still, 4K footage out of the main camera is quite good. It had plenty of detail, excellent colors, and great stabilization. There was quite a bit of noise, and we noticed some sharpening halos around high contrast details. Full HD footage had pretty much the same properties, although it had less noise in 30fps. This year, the Pixel 4 is back to having only one camera on the front, but at least it has a wider field of view than most phones. Selfies have nice colors and wide dynamic range, and there's plenty of detail, though we've seen other phones do better. Selfie portraits are also good, but not great, and we often got imperfections along the border between the subject and the background. So, in conclusion, the Pixel 4 is a very good phone, but its asking price is a bit too high. The competition has triple camera setups, much better battery life, and 90Hz displays that actually stay at 90Hz. Well, the Pixel doesn't. Now, if Google reduced the price of the phone by 200 bucks or so, the verdict would be very different. The camera experience is still amazing, the form factor is very comfortable, and the screen, while it does have these refresh rate problems, is a great one. Also, this being a Pixel device, it'll be getting Android's latest updates for the next two years. However, as it stands right now, if you pit the Pixel 4 against the rest of the competition, it simply doesn't offer enough. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe at the bell icon, and I'll see you guys next time.